right now on First Coast News. Shocking revelations about the driver of this car, why police believe he thought the world was coming to an end. Plus a rare smoke NATO caught on camera and it happened right here in our backyard. And the sunscreen you're wearing may not be protecting you as promised. What you need to know to save your skin. First Coast News at 11 starts right now. Breaking news happening right now. A motorcyclist is dead after colliding with a car in Ortega. You're looking live at the scene near the intersection of Roosevelt and Wabash Avenue. This happened around 8 tonight, but police are still on the scene hours later. Investigators tell us it's just too early right now to tell who is at fault. The name of the motorcyclist has not yet been released. And also breaking right now, a 22 year old man has been rushed to the hospital after being shot several times in the backside. Now this happened while he was riding his bike on West First Street in St. Clair. He is expected to survive, but police are asking if you know anything at all about this shooting to give Crime Stoppers a call. Ayuda! Ayuda! We have new video tonight of a former Mayport sailor barreling into a crowd of people in Times Square. You can see the car crashing before going airborne. Now this video that you see there, we know an 18 year old was killed in that crash and 22 others hurt. And all new tonight, we are learning much more about Richard Rojas's past and what was found inside of his car. First Coast News, Julia Janae is on your side. She joins us live in the Information Center with the latest. Julia? Thank you. That's right, guys. What they found is that our ABC affiliate in New York was reporting that law enforcement believes Rojas was smoking K2, synthetic marijuana, before that crash that killed one and injured almost two dozen more. Now, initial tests came back negative for alcohol, but positive for drugs. And while those tests continue, the investigation into why is far from over. <laughs> The images are terrifying, capturing the mow down in Times Square Thursday. Here's how the NYPD says this unfolded. Just before noon, police say Richard Rojas's car approached the intersection of 7th Avenue and 42nd Street. The driver made a U-turn onto the sidewalk, where he then hits 23 passengers before being apprehended by police. Sources told our ABC New York affiliate that investigators found Scientology materials in Rojas's car and that he made comments to police during his arrest that the end of the world was coming. This arrest was not his first. The former Navy sailor faced the law here in Jacksonville five years ago when a cab driver accused him of assault and battery. According to the police report, he was also charged with resisting arrest. And police say he made statements then about his life being over and wanting to kill all police. Police are still investigating how much stock to put in the statements Rojas made on Thursday. Jacksonville author and historian Wayne Wood was in Times Square as this chaos unfolded. When we saw people on the ground, we thought maybe somebody had gotten hit by a car. It was, a, it was the first person we saw was actually lying on the edge of the street. And then when we looked and saw other bodies there, it became apparent that something unusual had happened. He left debris in his car as well as uh, scattered bodies or a two or three block area. Uh, it was just unthinkable that somebody would actually do that. Those photos and those two charges against Rojas were dropped in Duval County. I talked to one of our legal analysts, Gary Beard, an attorney here in Jacksonville, who says that it's possible that the military took over that case or that the victim that filed that police report dropped the charges. So we will continue to get those details in to learn more about Rojas and his background. For now, reporting live from the Information Center, Julia Janae, First Coast News. Julia, thank you. Also new tonight, an incredible scene. Look at this. As crews were battling the West Mims fire, a smoke NATO, smoke NATO right there, formed and it was all captured on camera. You can see it kicking up lots of dust while the flames burned there on the ground. And good news tonight, firefighters made a lot of progress today battling this massive wildfire. It is now 40% contained. And take a look at this brush fire in St. Johns County. This is aerial footage of smoke rising above uh, three buildings that burned near Molasses Junction Country Store. St. Johns County Deputy Kyle Covich is being held a hero for rescuing a woman 
who was unable to evacuate and going back to rescue her cat. So the question tonight that we all keep asking, when is the rain coming? When are we going to get some relief, Lauren? Hey, Anthony, you know, it is coming. I promise we've got some rain chances on the way each and every day. Actually, for the next couple days, the rain and the moisture is going to be increasing from the west. So I think Jacksonville begins to see the showers and the storms by Sunday. Widespread rain by Monday. For now, we've got high pressure that's in control. It's going to lose its grip, though, as we watch this storm system make its way across the southeast. We've been sheltered, I guess you can say, thanks to that ridge of high pressure, meaning dry, sinking air. But we've got some very strong storms that are rolling through uh, Oklahoma right now out of the Oklahoma City area and just south of Tulsa. We've got tornado watch box in place, tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. And I'm showing you this because although our radar is quiet right now, we are definitely going to be seeing the potential for some strong to severe storms by Sunday and into Monday. So I'll have that forecast in your your seven day and we're talking rain chances for the next couple of days, guys. It's coming up. All right. Thank you, Lauren. A family has a warning for all parents tonight as temperatures heat up for the summer. They say above ground pools are affordable. They're easy to set up, but they are also prone to disaster if you're not careful. Clark Foyker is on your side tonight with what you need to know. The mom you're about to meet says two things. First, she took her eyes off of her son. Second, she left a ladder in place that allowed access to her backyard pool. She says the worst happened fast, but the effects will linger forever. The adventures of the early days of Blake Souter are well documented. Active, happy, running around. Eric and Trina Souter decided an above ground pool, affordable and easy to set up, was a good idea for their family. He wanted to go swimming so he knew his routine and he went outside while I was putting the movie on. I went to the pool and I screamed and my scream is what alerted Eric and he came out and I, by then I had, a, I had jumped in the pool. Detectives believe Blake was in the water for three to five minutes. He would remain in a pediatric intensive care unit for 42 days. Blake was only able to get into the pool because of a plastic A-frame ladder provided with the above ground pool kit. The A-frame ladder, central to a lawsuit the suitors filed and have since settled with the pool's manufacturer, Intex. How long are we going to let this go on? Alex Gillens, the attorney who worked Blake's case, the lawsuit says the ladder had a faulty safety system with negligent design and inadequate warnings. They set up in about an hour and they're sold all over the place. A quick search and couple of clicks online show big box stores and online retailers sell different sizes and different shapes of above ground pools. Online, hundreds of families have posted videos celebrating their new swim spot. Most above ground pool kits sell for under $1,000, come with pumps, cleaning supplies, and the A-frame ladder. So there are plenty of alternative designs out there that can prevent this unintended access to the pools. One type allows an adult to actually flip the ladder high in the air and lock it in place. The rungs too far off the ground for an infant to get into the water. Another type has a cover that pulls down over the rungs, making them impossible to climb. No ladders. Amy Pritchett teaches kids to swim as young as six months old with infant swimming resource. She recommends parents using an above ground pool remove the ladder when no one's swimming or purchase an aftermarket design that has added safety measures. You still want to think that your child's Houdini and they can get through things, under things, over things a lot quicker than we give them credit for. <laughs> the suitors have started a nonprofit to educate parents about keeping their pools safe and offer water watcher tags, hoping families will have a designated set of eyes on the backyard pool. Everybody's in denial that it won't happen to them. Tragedy is also now well documented in their home, with Blake as their motivation. The suitors are working to alert parents to the dangers and keep swimming safe. Before the complaint was settled, pool manufacturer Intex answered, saying their pool and ladder were not defective. The suitors settled the complaint for an undisclosed amount of money. On your side, I'm Clark Foraker, First Coast News. Thank you, Clark. Well, 12 students are back home tonight after being rushed to the hospital for heat exhaustion today. It happened during field day at George Miller Middle School in Putnam County. Officials say students were vomiting and feeling weak. The gas company was called out there, though nothing was found. The health department and the school district are investigating. A few years ago, Gainesville city leaders named their transportation building after former Congresswoman Kareem Brown for her service to the community. 
Well, as you probably know, one week ago today, Brown was found guilty on several fraud charges. So now city leaders are thinking about removing her name from that transportation center. Stephen Dial had a reaction from city leaders and the community tonight. Following her guilty verdict, city leaders here in Gainesville received more than 100 messages about former Congresswoman Kareem Brown's name on the building. Now they'll be meeting soon to discuss what they'll do about it. When we needed transportation, she has brought almost $40 million to this county. While in Congress, her slogan was Kareem delivers. The city of Gainesville saw that in action after receiving millions of dollars for a transportation system. But after her being found guilty of corruption and fraud charges, some have questioned if her name should remain on the building. Yvonne Henson thinks the name should stay. When we asked her anything, she found a way to make it happen. And we owe her, if nothing else, the name on that building. The issue was not on the city commission agenda Thursday, but it was talked about. Chip Skinner is with the city. What they're looking to do here in the near future is bring the topic up on how we name our facilities here in Gainesville. City Commissioner Charles Gostin thinks this conversation is premature. She hasn't been convicted uh, yet. You know, she hasn't been sentenced yet. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. I asked Corrine Brown what she thinks about her name potentially being removed. I love Gainesville and nothing will change that. Do you but think your name should be removed? I, I'm going to leave that to the community. Some like Greg McCann are on the fence. I don't know that uh, we don't have buildings that have felons' names on them, and I know we have buildings that have a lot of racist people's names on them, and they've never been removed. So There is no timetable on if and when city leaders will vote to keep or remove Corrine Brown's name. In Gainesville, Stephen Dial, First Coast News. A program that helps students with special needs in St. Johns County it could soon come to an end. It's called Sounds Connection and it's facing funding cuts. So tonight they need your help. Our Hani Rodriguez shows us why this program is so important to so many students and to their parents. For some, success means not missing a beat. I never thought that that was something that he would ever be able to do. Cassandra Case is talking about her son, Oliver, who is considered to have high functioning autism. If I even so much as played a song around the house, he would throw his hands up over his ears. But that soon changed after his mom enrolled him in Sound Connection, a music therapy program offered at four different schools in Ponte Vedra for children with special needs. I know what challenges they're facing in their lives and I use music to help them work on those challenges. One of Oliver's challenges was connecting with music. His mom says she thought she'd never hear him sing. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. I can't even express how proud I am of him, you know, overcoming this. She says she credits his success to the music therapy program which is grant and donations funded through their cultural center at Ponte Vedra Beach. They need to raise more than $50,000 in three schools to keep helping students like Oliver. I think there would be a hole in the fabric um, should we have to pull out for these students. More than 200 kids need your help being the best they can be. Seeing him on stage, sitting still, following directions, doing everything he's supposed to be doing, and feeling so proud and happy afterwards, that's not an average thing for us at our home. In Ponte Vedra, I'm Hani Rodriguez, First Coast News. Mm, that program has helped those kids so much. And if you donate anything more than $50, the Purse Backer Wyman Family Foundation will match your donation. They were one of the first families to donate to the program. You have until July the 1st. Mm. Seeing a little boy there. Yeah, singing. singing. Huh? Well, before you buy sunscreen, you'll need to listen to this next story. Some popular brands are misleading about the amount of SPF inside. That story in just five minutes. Pretty shocking. But first, Beyonce giving out scholarships. Is it a real statement or is it fake? We're exploring how to spot fake news in just two minutes. Well, if you have a social media account, your timeline is likely flooded with dozens of headlines every day, and many of those headlines are, well, often fake. They certainly are. So how do you know if the news is legit? Here's some clues. There's a lot of choices and there's a lot of information out there.
It's just like a series of steps is what I do. So the first thing that sticks out is one, that headline. Fake news headlines tend to be very exaggerated. They tend to be very hyperbolic. They are outlandish, kind of outrageous. Most mainstream news sites or legitimate sites will have a very easy and clear way to find their contributors. Broken links, the broken archive. I think people just see, oh, blue text underlined, this is a link, I can trust this, and don't necessarily follow where the link goes. Everyone's kind of participating in the clickbait rhetoric of headlines at this point. The more you want to believe it, the more likely you are to believe it and share it. You want to use your memory and your skepticism and multiple news sources to, to draw your own conclusions in the marketplace of ideas. Well, tomorrow night, you can catch part three of our series on fake news. You can also head to firstcoastnews.com. We have a quiz where you can test yourself and see if you can separate the real from the fake. Well, Carnival Cruise Lines has announced a new eight-day cruise that will travel from Jacksonville to Bermuda and the Bahamas in 2018. I want to go. The cruise will happen from April 7th to the 15th aboard the Carnival Elation. Carnival Elation is Jacksonville's only year-round ship and carries approximately 170,000 passengers annually from Jacksport. Okay, now to a story so many of you are talking about today. The next time you put on your sunscreen, a warning for you. There are brand new test results from Consumer Reports that show not all sunscreens are blocking UV rays as they advertise. So listen to this. Five brands labeled SPF 50 actually had a level between zero to nine. Now, among the brands, the Honest Company Mineral Lotion and Cerave's Body Lotion. Officials say you should also steer clear of so-called natural sunblocks. Natural sunscreens tend not to perform as well as the ones with chemical active ingredients such as avobenzone. So, which brand tested the highest? That would be Trader Joe's SPF 50. Experts say make sure your sunscreen is as effective as possible. You need to shake the bottle so that the active ingredients are evenly distributed. Nobody wants a sunburn. No, you don't. Mm. Not at all. And if you're going out to the beach tomorrow, you want to make sure that you have a good brand that's, <laughs> that is <laughs> effective because you're going to need it. Yes, I was going to say a full supply of that SPF yeah. tomorrow. At least uh, 30 SPF, I think, is what the, the EPA mm -hmm. actually says mm -hmm. you need if you're going to be in the sun. And then make sure you're reapplying it every couple of hours or so, that UV index almost to that extreme category guys so the sun is getting uh, the angle is getting higher and as we get into the sun summertime we can see that sunburn kind of happen a little quicker than we do obviously in the winter so right now the uv index means you can get burned without any sunscreen in about 30 minutes so you want to minimize that sun exposure of course if you can if you've got to be outside for a long period of time use that sunscreen and did you know that sand and actually water reflects the uv so that increases increases your exposure. So if you are trying to avoid the burn, you'll want to maybe hang outside of the sand and then the water. Did you also know that uh, today temperature was about 86 degrees, humidity was about 55 or so. Sweating actually cools you off. So it's an evaporation, which is a cooling process. And then also, did you know that when it starts to get warmer and also even more humid, that sweating process and cooling you off, it becomes less and less efficient. So this is actually interesting because our humidity is going to be increasing and those temperatures are increasing as well. So uh, it just means that you've maybe got to give yourself frequent breaks from the heat. We did see some uh, heat exposure today, again in Putnam County. So 88 degrees tomorrow and it's going to be breezy and humid once again that heat index value is going to be in the lower 90s for Jacksonville. 
And then we're going to need the windshield wipers as we head into the weekend because the rain chances are increasing. That high pressure loses its grip. We see a cold front move through the area late Sunday, Monday, and that keeps those rain chances in the picture, mainly for Jacksonville by Sunday, widespread for the first coast by Monday, but still beginning by tomorrow, we'll see some inland showers and storms by Saturday. They move a little farther to the east. I understand you've been driving all night and you'll period on. Never mind, don't worry about it.